surprise moves, an online battleground, fist bumps instead of handshakes. Under normal circumstances, GE 2020 would have been another interesting general election. With the COVID-19 pandemic, it has become an extraordinary one. Here's a look at the highlights of the last nine days. It's submitting their papers until nominations close at noon. On nomination day, the Straits Times provided live updates from nine locations on the ground. All 93 seats available were contested with a few surprises. The biggest of all was Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet, who moved to helm the People's Action Party's East Coast GRC team after two terms in Tampanese GRC. In El Junit, the Workers' Party fielded its strongest slate of party chief Pritam Singh, chairman Sylvia Lim, incumbent MP Faisal Manap, and former non-constituency MPs Leon Pereira and Gerald Giam. For the single seats, Singapore Democratic Party chairman Paul Tambaya was fielded in Bukit Panjang SMC against former Holland Bukit Timah MP Liang Eng Hua. All eyes were on New Progress Singapore Party member Mr Lee Sien Yang, who eventually chose not to stand for political office. After the close of nominations, candidates wasted no time hitting the campaign trail, reaching out to residents and holding press conferences. The only weekend of campaigning saw a hive of activity as candidates started their walkabouts early in the morning. Political big guns showed up outside of their constituencies to lend their support to their party's candidates. Retiring veterans bade farewell to residents and introduced them to new faces, and inevitably crossed paths with their rivals. In between, parties held virtual rallies and appeared on televised political broadcasts to get their message out to voters. Vote PAP for our lives, our jobs, our future. You deserve better. It is about speaking up for you. Make your vote count. During the hustings, several key issues became topics of contention between the ruling party and the opposition. Top on voters' minds is how the next government would bring Singapore out of the crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, what does the opposition have to say about getting us out of the downturn? or growing our economy, or creating new jobs. They prattle on about a minimum wage or a universal basic income. These are fashionable peacetime slogans, not serious wartime plans. For me, you ask me what's the current thing I worry about. You hear what they all say, job, 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 job. But to me, I think uh, another component very important is lives. Lives, jobs because we are still in the midst of the coronavirus. Earlier, the non-constituency MP scheme came under the spotlight when Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh warned that there was a real risk of an opposition wipeout. PAP leaders said the NCMP scheme guarantees a significant opposition presence in Parliament with full voting rights. I think our role as an opposition is to make sure that when we represent the people in Parliament, we are bringing their voices into Parliament on that front. So I think that's something we'll have to work very hard at. And I mean, what's the point of being in Parliament? Our goal is not to go there and just uh, needle the PAP. We want good outcomes for Singapore. But do not confuse signals by voting opposition if what you really want is a PAP MP to look after your constituency and town council and a PAP government to look after Singapore. Another issue was a claim on population numbers by Singapore Democratic Party Chief Chi Soon Juan. Will you categorically tell Singaporeans right now that your party has no intention of raising our population to 10 million? Dr. Dr. Chi, just today, the Prime Minister's <clears throat> office <clears throat> issued a statement advising people like you not to indulge in falsehoods. The government responded by refuting Dr. Chi's claims and said there were no plans to increase Singapore's population to 10 million. Over the weekend, two police reports were lodged against new WP candidate Raisa Khan over her online posts on discrimination against minorities. 
My intention was never to cause any social division, but to raise awareness to minority concerns. I apologize to any racial group or community who have been hurt by my comments. My remarks were insensitive, and I regret making them. While the Workers' Party threw its support behind her candidacy, the PAP called on WP to make it stand clear on her posts. Other issues raised include Singapore's foreign worker policy and opposing the planned GST hike. The election also produced several notable moments. As an educator myself, that warms the cockles of my heart. For a COVID-19 election where safe distancing was the norm, it was still a highly emotional and action-packed campaign. Now all that's left is the vote in this landmark general election.